All right, this is Pops. I want to tell you about a show called Tracker. Mrs. Pops and I have gotten to the first seven episodes. I want to give you my thoughts on if it's a show that's for you or not. I gotta be honest, first hint is Mrs. Pops made it through seven episodes. So take what you want. Let's talk about it. I don't know how to repay you. Just a reward money's fine. I believe it was 50 grand. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that I'm good at this. I'm surprised that you give a damn. Strong swimmer? So-so. So-so. Oh, So-so's okay. Tracker premieres after... Super All right, Netflix. Tracker. Now, we've seen it. It's um, through Paramount Plus and I believe CBS. This is Justin Hartley. He plays uh, Colton Shaw. And Justin Hartley, I knew from CW, but he's obviously been in This Is Us and a couple other things. So you might know him from that. <laughs> Colton. Did I say Colton? I meant Coulter. God, sometimes I stink at this. <laughs> He basically is the centerpiece of the show. He has a team of people around him who we'll talk about. And he basically is a reward hunter. He's a, quote, tracker. And the show gets off to a really strong start. And then you have some episodes, I think, that are kind of subpar, but never deviate too much from what their core mission is and what they're trying to accomplish. So the long extended trailer kind of gets into some of the details. So I'll put a link to that in the description so you guys can check that out. Um, I will be honest, I thought that... Uh, it would be kind of a very, you know, hit or miss type of thing. And for the most part, we're, we're at least enjoying the show. Jesse, well, that's a good name. I'm Coulter, by the way. Hi. Hi. Well, Jesse, what I need you to do right now is not panic. Let's get you home. So to give you a little taste, episode one starts with this missing lady. He's out in the middle of nowhere. She's gone off the beaten path. He's tracking her and he's giving her this whole big like survival speech. Like you can make it. I'm going to help you out. You can trust me. You can lean on me. It's really going to hurt. You have a, X percentage to live. Look at me. Very, very charismatic. Very, very confident. Really kind of sets the stage of his skill set. Then you have sort of like the rules of the game are kind of put into play a little bit uh, after he takes her into town. With and when he has a conversation with this guy, he basically just says, "Listen, you know, it's built on success. Just write a check. I, I found your girl, man. Give me the check." So that's kind of how the show is set up. It's like the different mission of the week, a different adventure of the week, those kinds of things. There's not really always an antagonist it's more like uh, situational now most episodes do have an antagonist which kind of allows for some uh, extra drama to be added to the mix so episode one and some of the other shows kind of take him through different uh, areas of the country which is kind of like what the episodes are named so he ends up in in the wilderness looking for a kid he uh, ends up uh I don't know. He's breaking and entering at one point he has to have his lawyer come save him so there's different scenarios that kind of add some elements to the show and kind of make you wonder is this a real thing or not and that actually is kind of a joke in the show which is a great line about you know is that a thing i think you made that up he's like no it's really a thing it's sort of an unusual job though isn't it sounds cool it is cool actually very cool so every episode deals with these two people i know you're seeing it on a little computer but this is the uh his lesbian couple that are handlers and that's kind of the extent of the show being woke is the fact that they kind of check a lot of boxes, but never commentary, never political or anything like that. They're just his handlers. I didn't really know them too much other than the one actress uh, played in Deadwood. She played um, Calamity Jane. They're fine. They're solid. They're basically computer whizzes. They kind of look stuff up, Googling up, get him jogs, that kind of thing. And they basically just send him out to the next gig. I'll do everything I can to find out what happened to your sister. People don't like strangers asking questions. And that's pretty much what they do. They send him out on another mission. He ends up at some other town. He's on some other thing looking for someone else. And that's pretty much how every episode kind of goes. He's the one picking up on some clues. He has like, that's the person you saw there. That was his computer guy, right? Black dude with, you know, two fake legs. Like I said, this is them checking boxes, but it works for the show. There's good banter and things like that. I don't want to say again, not comic relief or things like that, but enough to have sort of like, you know, tension breaking. This is, again, this is him behind bars because, again, he did break and entering to try to find this kid, and it calls the, uh, Rini is the name of this this lawyer he has a past with. She comes in, she's this high-profile, highfalutin, knowledgeable person, and they have a past, and there's all sorts of funny little tension-breaking things with that. Shaw. You're so damn interesting. Thank you. All right. The show also centers around some flashbacks to his childhood with his brother, conflict with the dad and then the dad's death. And 
I'll say this about the show. The show does get itself wrapped up in a lot of little subplots that has, that don't go anywhere. And this is one of the ones. Like, we see the mom briefly. We see flashbacks with this. We know the brother had had tried calling several times. And then for a couple episodes, we just sort of, like, forget about it, right? So there are certain things about the show that I can't give a lot of praise to, but there's other things about the show I actually enjoy. And they use actresses like this. She just kind of comes in for a minute. She's sort of a love interest, but it's never, like, some sort of weird that's going to take over the whole show or anything like that. Um, but I say there's there's some action sequences and things like that that you can enjoy and like um, a, a, along the way. So overall, we do enjoy the show. I think there's a couple episodes, especially the last two episodes, episode six and seven. The one involves a missing thoroughbred racehorse, which is so absurd on its face. I couldn't get our we couldn't get our head around the idea that you would have this not a hundred thousand dollar horse, like million dollar horse just vanished. You wouldn't have like state police and possibly the FBI involved. And it was like, oh, it's just on this other pasture. And it's like, OK, it was too ludicrous of a concept. And they were trying to create this sort of like intrigue and bring in this other character and create all the sort of like back and forth stuff like that. So things like that have not worked real well. Same thing with um, episode seven. It takes place in Chicago. So while he does wield a gun a lot, again, breaking and entering type scenarios at times, and you're like, okay, Chicago is probably one of the most regulated gun controlled areas. There'd be police all the time. They're just, they go too far with some of the things uh, calling on our suspension of disbelief from reality. But if you can get past that type of nitpicking, as Mrs. Pops calls it, uh, I think you'd be all right. The show's fine. Um, there's nothing objectionable at all. Just It's just generic prime time television to pretty much entertain you it's not always great and it's not always even good it has moments and drags on at times but there are moments i think that shine really well i wish they would do more of him sort of like being a savant tracker of like extra number of percents for this and this is a little clue here a little that it tends to get a little murder she wrote where things just kind of fall into place and just kind of work themselves out and he always wins the hand-to-hand combat and stuff like that so you know, not a perfect show. Kind of a B minus show probably would be the best way to grade the show. It's just one of those like if you need something on, it's safe entertainment. Like I said, primetime entertainment. I'm, I'm kind of surprised by it. And that's my take on it. If you watch it, you have any interest in watching it. Tell me what you guys think. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I am Pops.